What up, what up? You tuned in to the Jose Morales podcast where we talk sports, business, and everything in between. I am Jose, and we are at My Boxing Academy. Joining us in the ring today is David Bulldoza Melgoza. What up, what up? And if you do not know about David, right now he's a rising star to Sacramento. He is 5-0 and with two knockouts, fighting again here short, uh, February 7th. Yeah. And uh, one quick fact about us, we literally grew up together. I've known, we've known each other since kids, rode the bus together. And it was a unique story that started with teaching boxing. I mean, it started with boxing, teaching boxing, working together. And from there, it converted to us having kids, not together, obviously. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, come on, <laughs> But man. I mean, we had, we had our own lives, had kids, and uh, we got into there, shout it out to wanting to start fighting professionally. So yeah, one thing went uh, to another. Yeah, one thing went to another, and now we're here going on your sixth fight. So tell me about uh, every, every for all those that do not know about David. Tell us about David. Who is David, and what is David? What is David about? Man, uh, shoot. Well, I grew up in a household with five brothers. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, growing up in a household with five brothers, man, there was always something to do. Are you the do. youngest, oldest? Where I'm, are you at? I'm right in the middle. So Dead you're right in the middle. How yeah. is it being the middle child in, in five It's boys? actually at my 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 family will go to tell you that I wanted to be an only child at everybody. But <laughs> what you mean you want to be the only child? I, I just I I like doing everything on my own. I did mm -hmm. I, I, I like being spoiled. My best friend growing up as a as a kid, he was an only child, so whenever I went over there I kinda got a taste of what it was like. And yeah, I wanted to So you to want to be an only, an only child. child? Oh yeah. But the only yeah, problem yeah. was four other ones. Yeah, five so, other ones. <laughs> so you couldn't do it. <laughs> no, no. So you grew up in a house full of boys, and yeah, all boys. Where, where were you born? Where were you raised? I was uh, born in Sacramento, and and we were raised in North Highlands, mm -hmm. and uh, that we just we the, the atmosphere we grew up in was very energetic. There was always something to do. Always being the middle child, um, there was always someone to play with. Whether my younger brothers, whether with my older brothers, I don't see now that I have my own son, he's an only child, I have to find things for him to do. Yeah. With me, I didn't have that. I didn't have that issue. There was okay. always something to do. Yeah, because you, yeah. you pick on that brother, and yeah. now you pick on this one. Yeah, <laughs> so exactly. You, there's always something to get into. Oh, yeah. So how did boxing come about? How old were you? How did that? How did that? Actually, uh, uh, a friend of our family um, growing up was uh, Nunez family. Yeah. They were local uh, fighters from back in the day in Sacramento and my dad's best friend was Robert Nunez which yeah. was my original trainer um, yeah. Angela, Nun Angela Nunez it was his it was his older brother so they were him and my dad were best friends growing up um, when eight nine ten years old I was I was told to go train with Miss Nun Mr. Nunez who was Angelo's father Mm -hmm. We trained in his backyard. He taught us there. I personally thought I was in trouble every time I went over there because that dude was, he was evil. He was old yeah. school. He was mean. He made us run. Yes, I have actually, if you guys do not know the Nunez family in the 80s and 90s, I mean, there was a big, huge boxing family from Sacramento. They lived in Rural Linda. Uh, it's all boys. Yeah. All boys, literally. No girls at all. Not even a mom around. It's literally mm -hmm. all boys had a boxing ring in the backyard. Um, and they all box literally all of them they all com competed so that's who he's talking about he was around his family your family and their family were like family pretty yeah, much they pretty were around much. each other so you started training with what was scary about mr nunez uh, robert was his name right he would just yell for every every even if you did good he was yelling at you so i so, didn't know if i was doing something good or if i was doing something bad i assumed i was in trouble every time i, okay, I, so I got just, sent over there yeah an angry guy i'd walk intense. over there every time my parents sent me over there i, I would think to my head as I'm walking over there, man, what did I, what did I get busted for this time or, or what? Mm -hmm. but, yeah. And you were eight years old? How old were you? I was about eight, nine, ten mm -hmm. years old around there. Okay. And then what, what ne led next? Did you play any, any other sports? Did you play soccer, basketball, uh, football? Actually, growing up, my first sport that I locked onto was baseball. I loved really? baseball growing up. Yeah. I don't know. That you, was, so what's your baseball team? I know. I don't think I, I like the Giants. I'm a, I was you a Barry like Bonds Giants? fan. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you, yeah. You like steroids? No, 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 I'm not a fan of the steroids. <laughs> he, 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 hey, he, he, he was, right? he had a Hall of Fame career before the steroids. Okay, all right, yeah. all right. All I, okay, keep it going. Yeah. So, 
You, you locked into baseball as a young kid. Yeah, I played baseball. I, I, I really enjoyed it. But once I started boxing, it, it, that was it. it. It cut everything else so out. So boxing took over baseball. Yeah. That's what made you stop baseball. Mm -hmm. And t tell us about you. When was your first fight? How old were you? And how well, did that go? I was always, being the middle child, I was always fighting all my brothers. If I wasn't fighting my older brother, I was picking on my younger brother. So it was always something I was getting into. Um... I was the first one who started boxing as a bunch. I don't know if that had anything to do with it, the fact that I was fighting everybody at home. But um, once I started boxing, I really, really enjoyed it. And I wanted to do it. But I was too young to train at the gym with uh, Angela Nunez, who was the son of uh, Robert Nunez. Mm -hmm. um, after, a while, after two, three years, they told him a few times to let me train. And... He finally told his brother, his brother to bring me in to talk to me, just to talk to me. It wasn't, for, I wasn't gonna train, but he just wanted to talk to me. We did, we had a, just a normal chit chat, and I don't know what I said during that chit chat, but he allowed me to train. Yeah. And I think that was just like a test, how I carried myself when I spoke to him, and I, I must have passed the test because he let me, he let me train yeah. with him. Yeah. And just a fun fact for those that do not know, my original boxing trainer is actually their cousin, Angelo's cousin and all that. And my original boxing trainer um, grew up with them in the same household. And we were actually in the same gym, except he should have been with me during my time. Yeah. But he started boxing when he was real young, when you were eight, with, he was, you were training yeah. with 16, 17. 10, 11 when I started with Angelo. Yeah, and you were training with 18, 17 teenagers yeah. as a young kid. Yeah. And years went by, now he was with is when you went I was with Timmy I was with I was with Timmy for a little while yeah, yeah. and uh, so how many fights did you what was it the biggest difference or how did you even come about Timmy how did how did Timmy come across Timmy actually trained me over at um, primetime for a little while that's why I met Timmy yeah because I remember Angela would bring him every yeah. now and then so yeah, yeah I, w I, I met Timmy at primetime and once I decided to that I really to just I wasn't working for primetime anymore. I wanted to really pursue boxing. I, I shot over to Timmy's. Yeah, so let's already. put a, a little, let's hit the brakes with there. You said you were working at primetime. How did that come about? Uh, how old were you when you started working at primetime? How did how did that go? Because you, you're a quiet person. I know yeah. you. And uh, I was actually a lot closer to your brother, his brother, Anthony. Uh, him and I are really close. And they both were working at primetime. Yeah. And and Anthony tried to be a trainer. Remember they were training Anthony yeah. to be a trainer, and that ain't right quite work out because Anthony was super quiet. But you're similar. You're quiet. What was the difference between yourself and Anthony? How come you were able to transition to being a trainer, and you think Anthony wasn't? I think just my I was shy, but my personality once I got into the groove or, or you opened me up, I was I was always I was very open with everyone, and not I wouldn't say shy, but I I, I can. I wasn't afraid to speak in front of people, so teaching um, was never really an issue for me. Yeah. So. So how old were you when you started teaching? When I started teaching, I was officially at the gym, probably sixteen years old. Sixteen years old. Yeah. And you had already competed. Oh yeah. So yeah. you already had fights under your belt. Were you still fighting at the time? Were you still competing? Um, no, actually, no. I per actually went on and pursued track throughout high school. And, what track? So yeah. how was track? And those that do not know, David, this guy can run for days. Like. He goes, 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 and does not get tired. I, sometimes I feel like he's not human. He yeah. just goes and goes and goes. So how was track? Tell us a little bit about track. I actually didn't start running until the end of my junior year. Um, funny story was I, I never planned on running track, although I did. I always loved running growing up. I I didn't want to run track as as a sport because I mean nobody wants to run and. Um, in PE, I actually got in a fight in class, and myself and the the principal, we didn't really get along too well. My PE teacher at the time comes and pulled me aside. She was actually the the track coach of the of the school. Tells me, hey, here's the deal: you can either show up at at practice today and run track, or I'm gonna let the principal know what happened in class and chances are you'll probably be kicked out of school and and you'll by monday you'll be in another school 
So that was, it was that was my choice to make. We either get, whether get kicked out of school or run track that day. So you ran track. So I ran track. So what did you run in track? I was uh, mid distance. I, I used to run the four hundred and the eight hundred. Um, Is there a big difference in track? Oh, obviously it's a different sport. But what's the biggest difference between track and boxing? Like as far as uh the mentality or is it is it, it very team it's oriented actually very, or it's is very it similar? similar it is team oriented because you do have a team around you but when it comes to the competitions it's very it, a lot of it's on you it's very individual which is what i enjoyed about it the most was that it was you yeah it was on you you couldn't it's not like baseball or basketball where if you lose or if you win you're quick to say hey we won because i scored this many points or i did this but when you lose, you look around and everyone's pointing fingers, hey, we lost because you didn't do your part. You didn't do this. Everybody's blaming everyone for one reason or another. Yeah. And in and, and individual sport, you can't really do that. You can't really point fingers at all. It all falls on your shoulders, whether you win or lose. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Share a um, track and field memory, one of your favorite track and field memories that you had. Oh, man, it was a four by four relay. Uh, my mother actually just randomly showed up to one of my races and I, I i i told myself i had to win and it was my turn to run we're we're behind and i i just did what i had to do i, I had to focus on winning i just took off and i caught the first in the front we just battled it out back and forth for the first place and the stadium was going crazy and we ended up pulling out the victory oh, that's that day. tight yeah that's tight so. um so then you you're 16 years old you're teaching boxing how was it being around adults and and you're 16 years old and you're telling them what to do? I could tell you from experience I was in the same shoes as you, oh, so yeah. I'm pretty sure this is gonna be a funny. It was it was interesting. It was. So I remember being a remember, kid. remember Angelo tell us, "Hey, act like you're 21. You're 22." Oh yeah, shoot. So I had to tell everybody I was 24. Yeah, I was, I was 17, and in the back of my mind, I knew they didn't believe me, but. Um, yeah, I know a funny part about it. I, I did the same, and um, we had a group of girls and guys. Everyone were gonna go out to downtown, and um, I didn't know they were gonna go to the club. I thought we were just hanging out downtown. I actually went with them, and they all thought I was in my twenties. We're they're over here trying to go to the club. I'm trying to find a reason why why I couldn't go to the yeah. club, but because they didn't know I was actually yeah. not 21. But we had similar situations like that. So you're teaching boxing, 16 years old. How long were you working at primetime? I worked for about two, three years. Two, three at years? Time, yeah. And you ended up teaching. And you kept teaching after that, right? Because you went to different gyms. Yeah, you I, I to... worked at other gyms over the years. And then you also, you um, did, uh, you worked at Winko and all that. So Winko, tell us about house. all that. So what happened? You went from working at the gym, you went to Winko. How, what, what, what made you switch from... A uh, personal trainer to working at a at Winco at the we were at the warehouse right the yeah, graveyard. So I went I went so Winco from Winco I I went to another warehouse. Oh okay, um, and it was just a change of uh, of of things over the years. I wasn't at prime time anymore, and then coaching was always fun, but I needed something more consistent, and mm -hmm. so I went and started working at Winco. Did really well there. And, and what brought you on. back from Winco? What about you? Or what happened? Well, um, I had I had a, a son. Uh, mm -hmm. little David um, we were there we were we always got by every month but I knew how to make money I knew what I what to do to make money mm -hmm. and um, opportunity came up where I was helping a friend of mine um, Mike Ortega um, helping him out covering a few classes for him then he brought the brought up a, a position for me to teach full time with them and so we we took it yeah and then and, you ended up doing that yeah um, were you were you uh, in a relationship at that time? Uh, yes. Because I know it's difficult to teach or be a personal trainer while in a relationship. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah and that's day something day. where your wife, your girlfriend, has to have confidence and trust in being with you, especially when you're around women. Oh, yeah. It, it was, I it mean, was I, yeah, it is, it's difficult. I deal with it all the time to this day. I mean, yeah. why, why, why were you holding mitts with that girl? Oh, and yeah. I'm like, what you mean? I was holding mitts with everybody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely a hurdle. Yeah. yeah. So how was that? Did she ever flip out? Because you went from Wink. How was it? Because you were with her, right, during oh, that yeah. time. Did she, did she, how did she uh, make that adjustment hey, going it, from it, Wink home to? It's almost like everything went downhill as soon as I went back to the gym. Oh, really? But yeah. Oh. It, it, so, it is what it is. It is. Okay, let's change the subject. We'll no, save that no, for a Valentine's Day edition. <laughs>
<laughs> so um so you're at hit hit fitness right yeah with mike um and when you were there um keep us going so you were at hit fitness what yeah. happened how'd you you were there for how long i was there for about again another two to three years mm -hmm. about three years yeah great gym by the way if you're yes. in the isac area hit up hit yes. hit fitness uh on folsom boulevard with mike and uh keep going so you you're there. Yeah. Actually, uh, Mike was actually a, a close friend of mine growing up. Yeah. We, uh, we grew up similar to us. We grew up in the gym training together. He was yeah. actually part of the first generation, the older the older cats that I grew up with. Yeah. And, um, yeah, me and him started. Fun fact about Mike, those that do not know, um, Mike was actually the very first person to wrap my hands when that very first day of boxing. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mike was the first one to help me. Um, I, it, it's something I will never forget, but keep it going. So you, no. uh, you're working with your, cause you guys were roommates at one time. Oh yeah, he was my first roommate. I think yeah, I was so, 16, 17 when I first moved out with Mike. Yeah, and, and by the way, those that do not know, another fun fact about David, David actually had a house where we live. Oh shoot. That was no joke, the party house. Everyone went to that house to party it up. Uh, when I was probably, I don't remember, 17, 18, 19 years old. No furniture, but we had a house. The place where we went to party was David's house. We're like, let's go to David's house, and we tear it yeah. up. It was a night. It was better than a nightclub. Oh man! Uh, so, anyways, you're working with Mike, um, and you were there for a few years, and then you, uh, what happened? You try, you well, lead, um, lead me through. What actually, uh, Jose had contacted me about covering for him for a week because he was gonna, he was taking off to LA to go work a corner, and so we it all worked out. So I shot over here for a week and. But let, let me say something, the, the type of character David is, and, and I remember this day very clearly. David, at this time, I had hit him up, and um, and I'm like, hey, I need someone to cover me for these days. He didn't respond to me. He said, yeah, that, uh, I, don't, I think he left me on, on red. He oh, didn't shit. even respond to me, right? Check this out. But now I look back and I understand. He didn't respond to me. I asked Mike, because he was working for Mike, and Mike was like, yeah, no problem. Mm -hmm. We'll send David to go help you uh, cover those shifts, right? But the reason why I bring this up is that that's the type of person David is. David is very loyal and very caring. The fact that he didn't want to say yes behind his best friend's back because he was working there. He waited until Mike pretty much said it was okay. Pretty much his blessing. And that's one thing that I love about David is David is very loyal and very trustworthy. So I just wanted to make sure yeah. I shared that story. <laughs> thank so you, thank he you. came over and that's when he started, uh, you, you, you covered for me, I think it was like two days or three yeah. days. I can't remember how long it was. Cause I left on like a Tuesday. I think it was Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he covered and then you ended up here. After yeah. that, you didn't yeah. leave. Yeah, we, didn't leave. I, we, we made I, it. I we wanted a substitute teacher and I got a permanent teacher. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we made a, a full-time gig. Once. Yeah. So you're here now. What year was this? What, 2015, Probably, 16? Yeah. Something like that. And we're here. And at this time is when I first got the gym, actually. This was my first year in business. I'm here. I'm uh, rocking this class. And it was actually a, a great blessing. I was actually not looking for a trainer. And the fact that I got one and I got a great one. And, and besides him being a great trainer and knowing his stuff, he was a great friend of mine. It was amazing. Um, and it really helped me really grow this business. And I want to actually thank you for that because without him, I don't think I'd be able to be where I am today. Um, so it played a big role. Um, another thing that I want to say uh, about that whole situation. I want to actually ask you your 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 opinion, or I'm not your opinion. Tell us about when you started competing, because you're not you were no longer competing no more. No, I was you I was stopped. done with boxing. I well, was, how old? Your last fight was when? Uh, it was a probably five years prior. Uh, um, shoot, before I because you were I, I mean you posted recently some pictures of you during uh uh you're back in the day you said back when i was eating everything you were and you were all chunky yeah how much did you weigh yeah because you were pretty damn fat man, man. Be real you were pretty fat look when <laughs> david's mother when david's mother was pregnant i don't know what what happened but for some reason i you i got all the i got all the cravings i wanted to eat everything so and 
How 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 much did you weigh? If you don't I mind me pain. asking, how big did you get? I, the heaviest I, I've ever saw myself on the scale, I think, was two ten, two ten, over two hundred pounds. Oh yeah. shit! So yeah. you hit two ten, um, and so boxing career for you was done, right? Oh, yeah, I was done. I was so done. you're here in the gym. What made you want to compete again? What made you what what happened? Like something had to. It, it was you and I were were here. Guys would come in, they would need sparring, and this guy wouldn't even ask. He would just tell me to go put some gear on and get get in, get ready to spar. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, let's we'll get a couple rounds in. And we ended up doing good against some of the guys that would come in. Some of the some of the guys were pros in the area, uh, really good amateurs, and we would hold our own. We'd do good, and and I was told by a couple people that I should look to keep competing while I still have time, and we just hit the ground running. We just yeah. said, no, let's, let's, let's do it. That is true. I also, I mean, I was making you spar out of nowhere from time to time. Yeah. And then remember when we were watching fights and we're like, man, these pros are oh, yeah. garbage. Yeah. I mean, we watch pro pro cards and we're like, man, these guys do not look good. And one incident I remember is that I had told you that they look like shit. That was literally my words. I'm like, these guys look like shit. And you were like, we should do it. And I was like, ah, we, I'm like, I'm not going to do it. I mean, for me to do it is very difficult because everything going on. But he was like, huh, oh, train me and I'll do it. And, uh, and one thing led to another. Yeah. I remember I told you, you know, I didn't take you that serious. I'm like, how about you run for a month? And then if you run for a solid month, then we'll go from there. And you made it happen. You did it. And what can you tell us about your professional debut? Your, your this far, five professional fights, uh, where you're at now in your career to where you were six years ago with Wayne 210. What was the, what's the difference between... 210 David and 5 and 0 David. Oh, 210 David was, was I was eating. I was eating good. <laughs> <laughs> but, but but besides the physical yeah. and the way you were eating yeah. and living, mentally and how you felt and how you were, were you mentally and physically happy? No. Because your body was happy. You were yeah. 210. You were eating everything you wanted. So yeah. you were happy. But were, how did you feel? Um, oh, I mean, like I said, I was, in my mind, I was done with boxing. Um. It was just one of the things where I started really young. Um, boxing had always been a passion of mine, a dream of mine growing up. Um, like every kid who starts boxing at a young age, you want to eventually turn pro, go on to have a spectacular professional career. That's the mm -hmm. storybook ending. But I didn't get to that. I think that's one of the cons of starting really young is it's not a it's not an easy sport. It's a rough sport. You, I mean, yeah. you're getting punched in the head for a living. And in the amateur, you're not getting paid. You're just getting punched in the head for free. And um, over the years, it all adds up. And and so that that book was closed. And when the opportunity came up for me and you, it's like we just we it's re-energizing that dream that I had as a kid. Mm -hmm. um, turning pro and being able to go out and fight in front of people and fighting in your hometown and some pros fight their whole career and they don't fight in their hometown at all yeah. so that was a big thing for me with being able to fight in Sacramento in front of all my friends and family yeah all five fights been yeah. here yeah and shoot the first fight we 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 sold so many tickets to where the promoter bumped us to co-main event first fight so and that was actually for us to be able to pull that off was amazing crazy and, and just nerve wracking all in one, yeah, all in all in one bundle. Um, because being being someone who hasn't fought in so many years to go into a pro card and being a co-main event, your debut is, is crazy. I wanted to to fight first or second, get it out the way, and enjoy the show. You know, it's it's, it's nerve wracking being in that locker room and and seeing the locker room full filled with all these fighters and then little by little the night's going on is the, the room just gets quiet and quiet and then before you know it, it's just you and your trainer back there you got to warm it yeah, up well and then you you make that walk down to the ring and then the bell rings and it's on <laughs> it's on yeah. and popping so what is the what is the biggest thing i mean if you trained with timmy you trained with angelo you train now you're training there's only us three as trainers and you had any other trainer uh, uh angelo i was with uh at, the Nunez family. Um, yeah. So what is guys. the biggest difference you've noticed with training or is there any difference or is there any similarities? Uh, uh, between everybody? Yeah, between everybody. Um, 
just being working with Angelo for years and then going over to Timmy, it was like two different worlds. Mm -hmm. Angelo taught me how to how to box and how to move and how to to use the ring and and, and work your movement and and it's all about to hit and not get hit. Yeah. Going over to Timmy, it was a total opposite. It was I'm gonna I'm gonna you're gonna hit me, but I'm gonna hit you harder. You're gonna yeah. I'm, you're gonna you're gonna push me. I'm gonna push you. Harder. It was more like a, he taught us how to fight. Angelo taught me how to box. Timmy taught me how to fight. Timmy taught me how to go in there and be a dog and, and really push the pace and really show them what you're made of. And and that's one thing I loved working with Timmy was he if if you weren't gonna box, he he can teach you really how to fight. Yeah. And and, and he and he did. He did. So Timmy helped you a lot. Yeah. Timmy. Oh, oh they all helped me a lot. Angelo taught me how to box. I got the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. To where what what Angelo lacked was the fighting aspect and what. Timmy, Timmy lacked, lacked Angelo. Angelo, right. yeah. So, yeah, because you were Angelo for a long yeah, time. Yes. And, and. Cool. And then, um, so now you have your 5-0. and oh, What is your goals really with boxing? What is your goals with life, personal life? What are you, what are you looking to do? What's, what's, what, what, is, what is David Magoza going to do? Shoot, boxing-wise, I'm here to go as far as we can go to, together. I, 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 I told... So the day in the past, like, hey, if you ain't in my corner, I'm not doing it. Um, boxing is something that, that me and him started in my pro chapter, and I plan on finishing with with him in my, in my corner. So whether that's 15, 20 fights down the road, whether that's three, four, five fights down the road, um, if I don't have him in my corner, I'm not. It, it's not happening. But, but why is that? And I appreciate you saying that. But what about me? Or why? Why is that so important to you? Just because. Uh, I've never had the connection that, that me and you have, me and him, we understand each other. It, I've been told from someone who was in the corner with us in the fight, he said it's almost like a, a, a video game. Jose calls something out and now I'll do it. Like he's like, it was almost like Jose was playing a video game sitting yeah. in the corner. And I'll be 100% honest with you. When I first started training you, I thought it'd be a little awkward because we literally, I mean, grew up together. I mean, how do you go from training your best friend kind of yeah. you know what i mean we would be in the bus together to go to the gym together so i was like maybe this is gonna be a little weird and i felt weird at the beginning the first couple of times holding mitts for you just because you were my friend and then but you made it very easy t for me as a trainer to train you because you listened so well you were so well just educated and you're you were just a, such a great student of the game that it made the transition very easy and i, and I want to thank you for that but, and I also want to thank you for being so down for me and so down for the team and what we're about. So next step for you is the 7th of February. Yes. Um, who are you fighting? Where are you fighting? Tell us a little bit about the fight. And um, I, I believe his name Brandon Adams mm -hmm. out of Oakland. Um, I'm not sure on his record, but he's a tough fighter out of Oakland. And that'll be here in Sacramento at the Doubletree Hotel. And uh, out of your five fights, who is your toughest opponent this far? If you could say one person that was very tough, gave you a hard time, mm. uh, or whatever, what tough fight or tough dude, who who would it be? I would say I forget the guy's name, but it was uh, my fourth fight. He was uh, he was tough. He he hadn't fought in a few years. He was. Um, How does he look? What was his name? What was his name? Uh, Where was he I, from? I he was the one who he actually came straight out of. Uh, Oh, the prison. prison. Yeah. It was Waldo Sar Sarabia, yes, yes, Sarabia or was, something like that. Yeah, 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 he was a... Very uh, polite dude, by the yeah, way. Yeah, very polite. Very Polite yeah. dude, straight out of prison, came here to fight David and went back to prison, I think, right? No, no, he's actually, he's, uh, he, he's no. still... No, uh, I heard Tony told me he was going to go back. No, but I talked to Tony and... Uh, oh, they, he's good? They, they, they wiped they, it? Yeah, All right, dude, that's it. good. He's good. Very nice dude. Yeah. Um, so you're looking to fight on the 6th. Um, uh, what can you say about teaching and everyone in the gym, everyone you see here? Um, teaching, I love teaching. Teaching something that, that it's, I get paid to do something that I enjoy and I, and I love doing. And not a lot of people can say they do that. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of, I know a lot of people who get up every morning and they dread getting ready for work. Like yeah. it's something that they, it's just, and it's something that they, they, they weighs them down to where me, I, I can't wait to go to work. But like over the weekends, I get bored throughout the weekend. I can't wait for Monday to come around. Mm -hmm. 
not a lot of people can, can say yeah. that. Yeah, not a lot of people like Mondays. Yeah. yeah. So what's one thing that people do not know about David that you can share with us? Oh, man. Just tell us something that no one knows. Man, uh, there's a lot. There's, I, I had sure a lot of medical thing. problems growing on as, as a kid that um, I, I probably shouldn't be boxing at all. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but when you love doing something. It, mm -hmm. it, what kind of medical yeah. problems? Um, I had tuberculosis as a kid, um, a bad case of pneumonia. I've been hit by a car. I've been damn. Did, yeah, a lot of stuff went on over the years, and Ooh. I don't know if it, if it has to be me being the middle child or what. But <laughs> he got messed up. Yeah. Um, so if you have a kid that's or a young professional boxer right now in your shoes, similar situation, will we, or or somebody that wants to be a pro boxer, what's something you would tell him or her? What kind of advice would you tell them? If it's something you really, really want to do, mm -hmm. um, you're going to have people in your, behind you telling you why you shouldn't do it, why, for one reason or another, why you, this, that dream you have, don't waste your time doing it. Anything you, you, you put your mind to, you can do it. No matter, no matter how big the mountain is, you just got to want it more yeah. than anybody. So, yeah, ignore the negative, you know, and just keep your, keep your, eye on the prize and keep pushing keep yeah, pushing yeah, yeah cool how can people keep in contact with you how where, where where can they follow you where's your social media right instagram at david underscore malgoza underscore 916 um david malgoza on facebook and yeah that was my two two things i want to ask you i already know them but maybe the people do not know them why purple and why are you always wearing purple and also that's one question Go ahead, answer that, and, I'll, and, and then I'll give you the second question. Purple, you know, I'm from Sacramento, yeah, and I, and I love my Sacramento Kings. So, I think any anyone at the pro level from the city, if you have a if you have, if you have a team from your city, that's your team. Purple's our color, so those are the two colors I plan on rocking: purple and black. One thing I never told you too, by the way, if you were not a Kings fan, I would probably not be a trainer for you. Nah, I'm yeah, yeah, I, believe <laughs> it. I believe it. That's one yeah. thing we have in common: we're yeah. both diehard Kings fans. And that's, I have no problem wearing purple. Second yeah. question that I wanted to ask you is, where did Bulldoza Milgoza <laughs> come from? And why Bulldoza Milgoza? Well, for the longest time, this guy was, was over here trying to figure out a, a, a nickname, a, a name for me to go by for my boxing career. And he kept trying to rhyme something with David and he couldn't figure it out. Yeah, he was no, like, it was horrible. Nothing can go with David to, to, for a name. <laughs> And it has to do something, it has to be similar to, to the way you fight. He, mm -hmm. That's what he would always go by. So one day he was sitting there and, and the way I fight, I just like to push the pace. Um, I just move forward and I don't stop pushing. And one day I think he just said, man, you 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 move forward like a, dang, like a bulldozer. And then it just hit him. He said, Malgoza and he said bulldozer and we just kind of meshed those two together and yeah. then we came up with the bulldozer, bulldozer and Malgoza. Yeah. What's the feedback you get on it? People like it? Do you like it? I like it. Yeah. I like it. It fits. Um, I I like to fight. Sometimes my pride's too big for my own good and, and yeah. I make fights harder than they should be. But cool. I enjoy it. That's it. Well, thank you everyone for listening. I would love to get feedback from you guys. What you get? Anything you guys want to know? Uh, David also has a media day coming up on the 1st here at Jose Morales Boxing Academy in Roseville. The event is free. Uh, we have food. You get to meet Tony, Amy, David, and uh, Gabriel Flores Jr. from Stockton, the youngest ever to get signed on top rank. All will be here that day. Get to know them. Come take a picture. Also, let us know about the podcast, what you think. Give us some feedback. Send us a message. Thank you guys for listening. We out. Thank you.